But let me just say this, because this is where, where people do get fit. Sometimes they'll move from nine to 2016 or nine to 11. Well, you're crossing the bridge of nine to 10 and the bridge of nine to 10 is a bridge of some sorrows because there's a big difference between nine and earlier and 10 and later. So I just want to stress that point again. Welcome back to the show. And today we're going to be looking at what you may have missed in CF 10, 11 and 2016 with Charlie Earhart. And if you don't know Charlie, which I find hard to believe because everyone knows Charlie in the CF world, uh, he is a veteran cold fusion troubleshooter. He's been doing it since like the first version came out. And he's, he's been an IT wizard for like more than three decades now, I think. But right now he helps out people with their cold fusion servers. So when they're sick or not doing what they should be doing. And what we'll look at today is something you may not have considered that there may be a bunch of features in older versions of cold fusion that are still in the version of cold fusion you use today that you don't even know about. So we'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about CF Summit East where Charlie will be speaking. And if we get a chance, we'll reminisce about some of the other content conferences in washington dc so welcome charlie hey there thanks for doing these as always it's great that you do that for the community you're so welcome so isn't cold fusion 10 gone end of life why why would anyone care what new features were in cf10 sure sure so you know and that's reasonable question and the point of the presentation is that as i've been helping people over the past you know several years 10 years 20 years now and i'm sure you can attest to this yourself that people don't migrate up as quickly as the new releases come out so there are people that today are still running on cf9 or and here's the bigger point someone may say well i'm not on nine anymore i moved up to 11 or 2016 well, often they will have skipped, let's say, 10. And so 10 was such a watershed release compared to 9 and earlier. 10 and later are quite different, you know, because 9 and earlier ran on J-Run and 10 and later run on Tomcat. So I just use that as a marking point to say, you know, for anybody that maybe jumped from 9 or earlier to 10 or later, these are things to be aware of. And so... Of course, things that are that were true in 10 are by and large still true in 11 and so far into 2016. So it was just to say, hey, you might have skipped one of these or you might have been on it, but you were in maintenance mode only and you were focused just on what you needed to get working because maybe you used to be on nine and when lights uh, support for 10 uh, was still available, you knew that you needed to get up to a supported version but maybe you didn't do anything with it. You just ran your code on 10. And then the same thing, of course, can be true with somebody now only maybe moving to 11. I've got plenty of customers who are still on 10, still on 11, some still on nine, even earlier, and they come for help sometimes. And so even though it's not supported, and I always make it really clear, you don't want to be on a non-supported version for you know security reasons and bug fixes and things like that. Still, people do. And so the whole point of the talk is to say, well, here's the things that were new and different and maybe troublesome in 10. And then what was new and different and maybe troublesome compatibility issues perhaps in 11 and then in 2016. And so it's not just what are the features, but it's what are the hidden gems as I like to do in all my talks, but it's not the hidden gems talk because I talk about the major new features and I talk a little bit about some of the hidden gems, but I also talk about compatibility issues because maybe again, if you're moving up to say 2016 from 10, maybe you didn't pay attention to what was in 11 and maybe there were compatibility issues that came out in 11 and you didn't experience them because you just jumped from 10 to 2016. So the talk is gonna go over each one, 10 and then 11 and then 2016. And in those, each one, I'll talk about what were the major features what are the minor features? 
What are some key changes that you should be aware of for things like security and performance and you know, language differences? And then especially what's uh, you know, compatibility issues, things to be aware of that might cause your code to fail. And it might just be a minor issue to be aware of. Or, and this is as important, sometimes people are reading about the releases and they're under the impression from what they've read that there's some big deal nasty problem that makes them not want to go to one or the other or skip one or the other and often those issues have been resolved they've been resolved by updates bug fixes new connectors or just lessons learned and so i share a lot of that stuff to also motivate people to give it a try even if they're under the impression that it's not going to work because maybe the thing they're reading is a blog post from a few years ago or a couple years ago, and maybe even recently from somebody who's just misinformed. And maybe they wrote their experience and they never got around to doing the updates that would have fixed the problem. Or they're stuck on 11 and maybe the problem was fixed in 2016. So again, these are all just the kind of things I like to help people think through. Even things like licensing issues and um, the specific updates, what, what kind of changes got brought up in a particular update and things like that. So it's fun. I enjoy doing the talk. I've given it at uh, CF Summit last year, at CF Objective last year, um, several present days, several times. So I've enjoyed doing it. People keep having it selected to be a talk because I think they agree and understand that there's different audiences that will benefit from the different parts of what I talk about. Maybe some people won't care about the 10 part. Okay, that's like 15 minutes of the talk. Well, uh and you know, all, uh, most of those new features that were in CF10 are, are still in yeah. CF11, 2016, yeah. and I assume would still be in 2018 when right. that That's why comes out. Perfect. That's my point: is that even though you may have skipped one, the features that were introduced are probably going to be so. Great. 18 comes out; they're not going to focus. So you you mentioned uh, you know security issues because CF nine and ten are end of life and I know from that state of the U CF union um, survey we did that there's still plenty of people uh, running old versions um, and you know just like you were saying this is a really bad idea to, to still run an old uh, version of Cold Fusion. Um, it's just a whole, whole, you know, you could easily be hacked and, and not know it was Apple running old versions or? Well, I have to say that unfortunately you're breaking up a little bit, so I don't hear the complete question, but I gathered you were saying, you know, you understand the concern that, of running old versions and maybe you asked, do I see people still running old versions? It sounded like a question. And I'll say that, yeah, I often see that and it's a shame. And Sometimes it's because people just don't understand, you know, they just regard the CF server or their database server or, or whatever they're running. They just think, well, I just install it and it's ready to go. Right. And you know, that's not the case. Unfortunately, even if you downloaded CF 2016 today, it would not be fully updated. It's on you to update it. Now the good news is that in 10 and above, they do now have this automated update mechanism that will, unless you tell it not to, it will tell you when there's updates. And for the most part, you just click a button and update it and it's easy. But you know, there's people that have been using CF for a long time and they got burned back in the nine and eight days and they had trouble with updates so they didn't want to do it. And then you maybe know that, you know, sometimes the issues aren't with Cold Fusion. Sometimes the issues are about Tomcat. So Cold Fusion updates, maybe one in 10, updates include maybe not then maybe two and 10 maybe a little more uh include updates to tomcat so you want to get those updates not just for updating cold fusion but updating tomcat and then you may know that the jvm that underlies cold fusion that needs to be updated and it's rare that an update of cf updates the jvm new releases new installers even uh do so this is something interesting some people don't know and i would cover it cf 2016 if you got the installer today, it would be the latest available installer. And if it happened to be for Windows 64-bit, that installer came out in about February of last year, 2017. 
and it was new because it added support for Windows 2016. But you could also have an installer that was from December of 2016, and that was a new update they came out with that included a bunch of bug fixes and connector updates and a new JVM. But there are some people that today I see, I help them, they're installing with a CF2016 installer that's actually the original one that came out in February of 2016. And that has no updates and it has an old JVM, you know, for the time old. So I'm just making the point that even today when one downloads CF2016, it needs to be updated because it's like on update three and the latest update's five. But more important, I want to caution people when you are about to run the installer, you know, go make sure you get the latest one. At least it'll be that much more updated than perhaps one that you got from somewhere or you've been bringing forward from one machine to another. Uh, so, you know, these are the little things I do cover. But more than that, I talk about, you know, the feature differences and what's changed and what's different and what's new and why you want to take advantage of them and things like that. Now, hopefully, uh, some of the people listening are thinking of upgrading to Cold Fusion 2018, which, you know, is coming out real soon now, <laughs> though we don't know the exact date. Um, so why should CFers care about these old features? Well, you made the point earlier that even if one jumps to CF 2018, let's say from CF 11, the things that were new in 2016, you maybe didn't pay attention to, they're going to be in 2018. And I'll say it again, the things that were new in CF 11, you maybe didn't really fully take advantage of. I mean, you know, again, you and I've been doing this for 20 plus years. You know that there's people who don't take full advantage of things that CF can do. And every release adds new things. And some of them are language features and some of them are productivity features and some of them are security features. And so you want to be aware of these things. Even if you are on the latest version, you sometimes will be surprised to find out, oh, I didn't know that 10 added that feature or 11 added that feature. And you may not go back and review the documentation you know, that's the thing where I, I come from is that a lot of people, they, somebody installs the whatever, let's say it's CF 2018, you know, someday this year, CF 2018 will come out, it's called CF 2018. When it comes out, someone's going to install it. And the people that do their development and run their applications, you know, they might never even look at the docs for CF 2018. And I'm just saying, they probably didn't look at the docs for CF 2016. And for 11, and maybe even for 10. And so they're just not paying attention to what's new. All they care about is, does my stuff run? Or if we add our new functionality, does that new functionality work? But often they're not paying attention to what's new and different. And so I'm here to, you know, just carry the flag and say, there's lots of new stuff in every release. Dozens, dozens, literally dozens, several, several dozen things that were new in 10. Several dozen things that were new in 11. And a few dozen things that were new in 2018. And there's going to be another few dozen things, at least new, in 2018 so it always pays to be aware and it's an hour of your time and just come in and i i really feel that everybody that comes into the session will learn something something may be oh my gosh i didn't know it did that i've been waiting that forever and i never knew it was added and other things will be oh that's what we needed we've got to do that functionality i'm glad to know cf does that now so just lots of cool stuff so it sounds like, you know, for if someone was going from CF9 or 10, that they easily could be close to 100 new oh. uh, features or fixes available. And I want to say features, not fixes. There's a few hundred fixes. And that's why I stress again, mm. sometimes when people say, oh, I don't want to go there, wherever there is. I don't want to go there because I've heard that that's bad and that people had trouble. I mean, just recently on the uh, CF forums, somebody who's been in CF for a long time, he said, I'm not moving to CF 2016. I've seen too many people complaining about trouble with it. And I thought, really? CF 2016? And I decided to put together a new forum thread and I've posted it there saying, hey, everybody, you tell me, do you have showstopper problems that are keeping you from going to CF 2016? And uh, are you aware of some issues that are affecting a majority of people that would want to go? Because I'm saying, I don't know of anything that would keep a majority of people who'd want to go from being able to go. Now, does that mean there aren't some issues? Sure. There's some issues where somebody or some small segment of people have some quirky thing that doesn't work for them. And there may be a bug that they've 
reported. And we should point out for folks that don't know, there is tracker.adobe.com. That's the bug reporting mechanism for the past couple of years. And maybe there's something there that somebody will say, yeah, that, that's our bug. That's, that's keeping us from going there. Well, fair enough. I'm not saying there's no bugs, but I'm saying I'm not aware of there being showstopper issues that should keep somebody from going up. But my point, or, you know, that, that affect a majority of people, I want to stress that point. But, you know, sure, there may be somebody who has not moved to it because they heard there was a problem. And it may be that that problem is no longer true. It might have been fixed by an update. It might have been uh, a temporary problem that it was fixed by an installer. I mean, I'll repeat again, the original installer, what it lays down is different than the later installer of later 2016. And I've seen some differences that were down to some underlying XML files that were different in the one installer versus the other. Now, I don't want to get in the weeds on that stuff. And I'm not saying that's the kind of thing that should keep somebody to be panicked about which one they use. But it just stresses the point that these are important differences. And then we're just talking about 2016. Then there's CF11 and all of its variants with different, a couple different installers over the years and a couple, you know, 20, uh, 15 updates to 11 and there was 23 or 24 updates to 10. Anyway, I cover all that in more detail and I point out what's distinctive and interesting about the key updates that were added. So again, I don't want anybody to feel overwhelmed by this stuff. Bottom line is you could move up to it and as long as your stuff works, you wouldn't pay attention to it. And that's kind of where I think most people are is they don't pay attention and they just want to know their stuff works. I think you'll find that by and large it will work. And if it doesn't, there are you know, some issues to be aware of, and there's some workarounds to get around them, and there's some um, things to be aware of. There are some compatibility issues. And, and they may not hit you. There are plenty of people who have no problem moving to 2016 or no problem moving to 11. But let me just say this, because this is where, where people do get fit. Sometimes they'll move from 9 to 2016 or 9 to 11. Well, you're crossing the bridge of 9 to 10. And the bridge of nine to 10 is a bridge of some sorrows because there's a big difference between nine and earlier and 10 and later. So I just wanna stress that point again, that that big change in 10 to running on Tomcat, there's differences in how files, you know, where the files are and what the folder structure is. There's difference in how some underlying configuration things get done and some old things that you used to do in nine and earlier maybe to turn on JRun metrics, they don't work anymore. There's a new metrics feature built into CF10. So sometimes you'll read some things then do some things that maybe will be quite different when you go from nine to whatever is new. But I'm just stressing that that difference isn't like, like I've had people, that guy I think was probably really saying that he's had problems moving to 2016 or heard people work. This maybe were people that were jumping from nine to 2016. Well, heck they were getting 2016 and 11 and 10 and all the new differences and issues. And they just need to be aware there's much, much more to a given release than just that latest release. If you skip some, there's gonna be issues related to the releases that you're skipping. So again, the whole talk, it's only gonna take 45 minutes to an hour. We're gonna cover all this ground in that talk. We don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna scare people away and we don't wanna do the whole talk here, obviously. So we're about uh, 20 minutes in. So anything else you so want? Yeah, sure. I, I, I know you've presented this talk, um, you know, to hundreds of CFers over the last year or so. And I, I'm kind of curious, what, what, what was the feature that most surprised people that they didn't know about? Well, there hasn't, you know, there isn't too much opportunity for that kind of feedback. Um, so I can't know for sure <clears throat> what people would say was I kind of wish you'd asked me that earlier to think about it because I know there's been a couple <laughs> of things that people have been, you know, generally intrigued to learn about. I guess I'll say this, and that's why you really just want to come and see the talk, is that there are language features that are going to excite people that do other languages and have lamented that they had to do things in a CF way and they wish they could do it the way they did in other languages. There have been things in 10 and 11 and 2016 that address that things like the uh, um, the ability to use was it colons to separate um, properties the, um, the there was a, the Elvis operator there was um, the other operator I forget off the top of my head but it's like the Elvis operator 
uh, it's like a coalescing null feature. Anyway, I'll cover that. But I'm just saying there are language features that are different that some people will go, oh, that's going to make my life easier, that I can use that because I was used to using that from whatever language they're coming from. And then some people will already know this, but it's worth highlighting that CF11 fully implemented 100% script capability. You don't have to use a single tag anymore if you don't want to. You know, some know that in 10, 9, and 8, there were various fits and starts towards adding more tag, uh, script-like implementations of tags. And some of those approaches were kind of wonky, and those didn't continue. What was done in 11 was a, a whole new kind of way of doing it. And every tag, uh, maybe except for a couple of things, but for the most part, every tag, you can do any tag in script. And there's a nomenclature for converting what were tag attributes and values into arguments uh, and values for a, a given function for the most part, or uh, other you know ways of doing it. But anyway, we won't go into that right now, but that's an example of something where somebody who wished for full script support yep it's there in 11. yeah no, that's great so what about I, cloud deployment I, I know a lot of people these days are looking at you know deploying either through docker or some other cloud deployment strategy um do any of the changes address that or well i wouldn't i don't think that there's any that i would say that were specifically related to that i would say I mentioned in passing earlier that we'll cover licensing changes and there's always in every release, there's licensing tweaks and everybody should look at the EULA, E-U-L-A end user licensing agreement and for whichever one you're on. So if you're going to 2016, look at the EULA for 2016. And if there's something you don't like about it, look at the EULA for 11 and you might go, huh, we're going to stay on 11 because we like that EULA and the way it deals with this issue or that issue. And sometimes it's about, VMs, sometimes it's about cloud deployment, sometimes it's about number of cores. And I'd highlight some of those key differences in the talk about what was different in 10 and what was in 11 and what was in 2016. But as far as functionality and features, no, there's nothing I can really think of. I mean, some folks know that S3 support was added. I think that was back in eight, uh, maybe nine, might've been nine. But anyway, so that's not new in those. Um, and then you, know, you mentioned Docker and some people know that Adobe has said that CF 2018, they're intending to offer Docker support, you know, Docker implementation of Cold Fusion. So we'll see about that. Um, you know, that's, that remains to be seen. So yeah, I can't think that there's much else that would be particularly interesting. Though I will say that when I was uh, starting to list some of the features, I was distinguishing that there are things that will interest developers. I'll say that there's also things that will interest administrators and there's a whole bunch of features that are of particular interest to administrators. So for instance, again, I mentioned the CF10 added the automatic update mechanism. And when that works, it works great. I'll throw out too that sometimes it doesn't work. And for those who maybe have tried to do an update of 10 or 11 or 2016 and tripped over it, found something didn't work, the admin didn't come up or cold fusion didn't start or some code was broken. Sometimes it's that the update does not work, even though it may look like it works. Sometimes if you look in the underlying log files for the update, you'll find that it doesn't work. So I have a whole blog post on that and I talk about it and point to it in the presentation. But I'll just say that if you're ever having trouble after applying an update, don't feel like you have to uninstall and reinstall Cold Fusion. It's just a problem with the update and my blog post talks about it. And if you just Google uh, Cold Fusion 10 update help, because I talked about, I, it came out back in like 2013 and it was in the context of uh, the things that were different, or maybe it was in 2016, I can't remember, but I had said uh, with regard to the update mechanism that new and Cold Fusion 10 and above. So yeah, check that out. So there's new administrator features, new developer features, new security features, new uh, features in all kinds of different areas that will appeal to different people. And that's what I was really trying to say earlier to your question was different people will find things more appealing. Some people won't care about the admin stuff at all. Some people won't care about the language stuff at all. So everybody's going to find something appealing. And I probably do list a hundred new things in the course of the presentation. And of course, I don't have time to go over every one of them, but I try to organize them and categorize them and say, you know, these are ones that might interest you. And I list them and highlight them 
uh, ones that might be of particular interest. So, and then I point to resources for learning more, whether it's my hidden gems talks, every release I do a hidden gems talk and I get into more detail in those, obviously, because I have a whole hour to talk about how it will release. Um, and then I also point to Adobe's docs. And I just want to say this too. I like to always make the point that there's more to the Gold Fusion documentation than just the CFML reference. If you Google stuff and all you find is what's called the CFML reference, that's not the way to learn Gold Fusion any more than looking at a dictionary is not the way to learn English. You know, you need to be shown how to use the language. And the same thing's true with Gold Fusion. So there's the developer's guide. And many people don't know it's over 3,000 pages in PDF, if you could get a PDF of it, 3,000 pages. And there's often 30 pages on how to do X. And so if you're trying to learn how to use a feature, don't look at the reference, look at the developer's guide. It's called Developing Cold Fusion Applications. If you Google that, you'll find it. Um, so anyway, I point to the key resources because often in that guide or sometimes in the reference and sometimes even in the configuring and administrating, they might talk about have a, a page or a section that says what's new in the release. And they may have a paragraph or two on each new feature and you should definitely check those out. So again, I'll point to them in my talk for sure. Fabulous. So I know you, you spoke at um, CF Summit East or as it was called the CF right. Government, Government Summit, I think, but they, they renamed in the DC or East Coast area who wants to learn a lot of cool CF. Yeah, yeah I'm glad they, they did. And, um, you know, I, th I think there are 10 speakers total, two tracks. Yeah, um, and uh, you can't beat the price of this event. It's zero dollars. Yeah. So, and, and it includes breakfast and lunch. Yeah. So very generous of Adobe to, yeah, to do that. If anybody's in the DC area or anywhere nearby, it'd be worth driving even a couple of hours to get there. Um, it's going to be a you know, great event with several speakers, two tracks, keynotes from Adobe. And I want to also highlight that you want to see the Adobe keynote because they'll not only talk about what's new in 2016, but if they follow the pattern of the past couple of events I've seen them at, the keynote talks about some very compelling things about the present and future of cold fusion. Some of the things I'm hinting at, but more that I don't get into. Uh, for instance, you know, sales, uptick in sales of licenses of cold fusion, and not just for um, upgrades and um, support agreement license, but really literally selling. They, they highlight how sales to new customers that had never had cold fusion before have been going up for years and they show those numbers and they show the trend with the graphs. And, you know, we talked about security earlier and I'll say, again, I'm not trying to steal the thunder, but I just, for those who maybe won't go, something else you'll hear them make a great point, which is that there haven't been any zero days for cold fusion. I think it's been like three or four years because Adobe is wow. taking security seriously. And, you know, so many people just want to poo poo things and, parrot what they've heard for years and sometimes you're hearing stuff that has been said for three or four or five years and no one's challenged them but yeah i mean there's been no zero days in cool fusion and adobe takes security very seriously and has like i said upgraded cf and upgraded tomcat and upgraded java and added security features that uh, and, and added new the secure profile in 10 we'll talk briefly about that and they've evolved how it works in 11 and some ways in 2016 even so yeah I'm, I'm very encouraged and you know you like to always ask you know a question at the end about uh, the vitality of cf and i'll just say that um, if you look at things objectively there's lots of good things going on and you could be misled and and led down a, a sad path by people who want to just claim there's nothing but bad news and i don't see it i'm, I'm i help people every day and all week probably about a 10 clients a week and I help make problems go away. And sometimes the problems are ones that they thought were daunting and we're going to make them have to leave CF or leave whatever version they were on or go back to the old version. Uh, and that could leave you feeling like things are very bad, but I love helping solve these problems and it often doesn't take very long. And so the good news is that I've left a trail of very you know, happy people that have stayed with CF and not had to move or not had to, go to a new 
clustered implementation because we thought CF couldn't scale or whatever. And of course, if, if you want to go to clustered implementation, there's great value to that. And I can help people do that as well. But I'm just saying I've had people that thought CF was the problem and that they had to go to very expensive boxes with huge amounts of RAM and much CPU. And we found out what the problem was and it was like, oh, no, you don't. So maybe you can forestall that major purchase or you can spread it out over a couple of machines and increase, you know, reliability and not worry so much about concerns over scalability. But again, I don't want to go too far down the road of discussing things like that. Uh, I know you've got some other people. Uh, in fact, Mike Collins was, you said you'd, you'd had an interview with him, right? Was his on? Yeah, I talked to him a few weeks ago. And was that on a performance yeah. kind of focus? Yeah, he was talking about uh, cold fusion performance and. Um, Good. So people should. So, have you got that one? Oh, yeah. I think it comes out next week, so I'll put the link in the show notes for this episode. Um, we we talked all all about scaling sure, sure. cold fusion, and I'll put all the other things we mentioned in the show notes on the TerraTech yeah. site podcast page mm -hmm. for this episode. So. Um, yeah, looks looks like a great lineup of speakers, and it's a really convenient location near a metro in what downtown Washington D.C. I think it's only two blocks away from where it was last year. It's, this year it's at the Renaissance Hotel, and um, and April so, is lovely. You know, yep. it's the perfect time to be coming and and seeing maybe the cherry blossoms. Sometimes they will have frozen off by then. Probably by late April, they'll probably be gone. But you never know. And uh, it's a lovely time for DC. Lots of tourists come, and so you can, you know, expect a lot of vitality. Restaurants, lots of people. Bars, lots of people. Streets crowded with lots of people. It's really amazing to, to look back on how DC's changed over the years. I mean, even when you and I were doing the, uh, you know, the Maryland and and various events in the DC area 20 years ago, DC was very different. And if you haven't been back in a long time, you're going to find DC is a, is a very vibrant. There's lots of uh, excitement in the downtown. There's restaurants, all kinds of stores and restaurants. Uh, the way it had been, you know, 50 years ago and 60 years ago, when it kind of fell on hard times in the 70s and 80s, it's really come back roaring in the 2000s. Yeah, no, it's really, really improved. I, I remember how it was in the 80s. It was uh, interesting, <laughs> let me call it that. My, so, my school bus, um, school bus used to go and down DC taking me so, to and it was just horrible going through just, just like five blocks from where we we're going to be. It was so bad. It was, you know, broken bottles and trash on the streets and buildings burned out. And it's just very, very different since the sixties and seventies and eighties. So yeah, glad to see, sorry. We had a little bit of a lag, so I stepped on you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Now it's all, all, no, no worries. So now it's all fancy shops and bars and uh, condos. And, and people. That's the thing. I mean, it used to be, I went to, to college as well at GW, which was in DC. And this was like 80, the early 80s. And um, yeah, and the streets rolled up <laughs> after like six o'clock. Everybody was gone and there was not, not much else except going to nightclubs in weird places. <laughs> <laughs> that were otherwise not seemingly nightclubs. And uh, now it's just all busy all the time. That's great. So people really, um, if you're at all hesitating about going, um, still have a great time with the culture, with the uh, museums and monuments. They're all within walking distance of where we'll be. So it's a, it should be a great time. Yeah. And um, it's happening on Wednesday, the 25th of April. So from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, so, and we'll put the, the website for it. It's on the Carsoft uh, website, but we'll give the exact URL to in the show notes. Sure, and if you um, go to blogs.goldfusion.com, currently it's the, the current blog post that's been there for about a month or two is the announcement of the event as well, blogs.goldfusion.com. Yep. Well, we'll, that's, we'll link that in too if people want to refer to it uh, with the exact URL just in case they post something else yeah, on that yeah, exactly. blog because you never know. Yeah, um, 
So yeah, but good memories of Cold Fusion conferences in DC. I, I remember going to the uh, there was an Alaire conference, I think. Yeah, the Alaire DevCon in '99. Yeah, or maybe two thousand. Uh, but yeah, I think it was '99. It might have been two thousand. You might yeah, be I think right. The first Alaire DevCon was in '99, and it was I think in Boston, and then the second yeah. two thousand, and that was um, that hotel over off of Rock Creek Park. Um, where I had my high school prom, in fact. I can't remember the name of the, but it, it's one of those old classic hotels that was there. But anyway, yeah, that was a great event. And I just had somebody the other day send a comment on Facebook or something recalling that it was a, it was a fun time. Absolutely. And then uh, yeah, we, this year is the anniversary, the 20th anniversary of the first national CF conference. It wasn't the Allaire DevCon. This is some trivia for you. <laughs> you used to love to do trivia nights and your uh, games at the various conference you ran, but um, the first national CF conference was not the Allaire DevCon. It was instead the, um, I guess we just called it the Cold Fusion Developer Conference. And it was uh, run by Roby, Sen, and a couple of other folks that helped organize it. And it was out in Fort Collins, Colorado. And I got to be a speaker there and Jeremy Allaire was a speaker. And it was about a dozen speakers. It was a great event. And um, and then around that same time, you were running the Maryland Sea Fug and started doing the CF events at the NIH Sea Fun and what became CF United. And that was great times too. Again, thanks for your involvement in getting those things going back then. Sure, we had good times. Did 11 years of that conference. So uh, maybe the spirit of it lives on in the CF Alive podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so if... If folks want to find you online, what are the best ways to do that, Charlie? Well, I mean, of course, my website, careheart.org, is the you know best place. And if you just Google my name, even if you misspell it, you'll prob probably find it. But it is. Uh, but I'm also at you know, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, Skype, and everything else at just Careheart. C, A R E, H A R T. Careheart, one E. Fabulous. So it's great having you on the show telling us all about uh, Cold Fusion. And I um, hope you your talk goes really well at uh, CF Summit East. Anything else you want to share today before we go? No, I don't think so. Just hello from my log cabin. This is where I work. Uh, I'm really blessed to be able to work from a log cabin in here all you know by myself it's just a one-room cabin very comfortable nice uh, mini split for providing heat and air throughout the year and the outside is just woods and farmland and i hear cows in the distance and critters running through the woods and not anything else it's wonderful it's very quiet it's a wonderful place to work and i know I, I, we can't hear you must have shut your doors but we can usually hear in your background uh, <laughs> getting late in the day but we usually hear birds songbirds and uh, other wind blowing and you have down there you're in the Costa Rica no where was it again Peru I'm in Peru right now I I travel around I I spend about six months in Peru and I spend a couple of months in Thailand and Europe and the states so <laughs> that's my uh current uh, whatever so wherever my laptop is that's where my office is <laughs> I, I just love traveling. I, I've got a goal to visit every country in the world. I, I think I've got about 54 off the list. There's 193 or wow. people argue about how many countries there are. So, and of course they're always going away or creating new countries. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Don't worry about that. Well, I just, um, the other day my, was my wife's birthday and uh, one of the gifts I got her cause she enjoys, you know, we enjoy traveling too. And she loves to keep track of where we've been and, had always talked about getting a map with push pins in it. And you may know oh. that there's these available maps that are, that have a scratch off. They're kind of that same material as on a scratch off ticket. And so you just, oh. maybe they come with a little scraper and you can scrape off the countries you've been to. So as you visit countries, the map starts to go from being, you know, gold colored over top of everything to multicolored and the colors of the flags at the bottom. It's a neat idea. You might want to check that out if you're going to, you know, if you want to keep track of the, 50 so that you've been to you, you'll be busy 
Yeah, I think there are some on. I use an online app. I, I don't remember the name of it, but you you kind of check off the country and it does the same thing. So that's a great suggestion. Well, uh, great talking to you, Charlie, and thanks for coming on the show today. Again, thanks for what you're doing and keeping CF alive. And until the next. All time. right. Yes. All right.